they, they say, look, I'm a technical trader, but you know, I understand fundamentals also, and I can't understand why gold isn't just heading straight up from here because the world is insane. And when the world is insane, people go to gold and silver because it's 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 grounding and they want to have something in their hands that they can feel and know that they can wake up tomorrow and it'll still be there. So they're they're kind of losing it and they don't understand. And you know, frankly, neither do I, but it's okay. I, I know everything's on a delay. I know what's gonna happen later. Um, so yeah, and on, on the one hand, I'm surprised. On the other hand, it's about time. And and we're living in that dialectic until bam, something happens and then you wake up the next morning and gold is like 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars an ounce and your dollars can't buy anything. Could it be tomorrow? I don't think it's going to be tomorrow, but it's going to be one of those days. Reflecting on the impact of a higher gold price and the depreciation of dollar purchasing power, it's essential to note that despite gold's price surging a hundredfold, its value stays constant. In contrast, holding U.S. dollars results in a significant loss with a 99% reduction in their value or purchasing power. In this video, Rafi Farber predicts a significant gold surge, visualizing a morning when its values skyrocket, eroding the purchasing power of dollars. Rafi is surprised by the Federal Reserve's inactivity despite the shrinking money supply. He speculates that the surge in bank credit is particularly influencing the money supply. Typically, the M2 money supply rises over time. When it does contract, the decline is usually very small. But it's been bad news whenever M2 has shrunk by several percentage points in the past. Granted, the current M2 decline of nearly 4% is nothing compared to the money supply contraction of almost 30% that occurred during the early years of the Great Depression. However, it's close to double the decline experienced in 1921. Prominent economists, including Rafi Farber, predict that when the Fed resumes money printing, gold prices could experience significant moves toward hundreds of dollars. After ending the previous week on a bullish note by surging nearly 2% on Friday, gold started the new week on a firm footing. After XAUUSD climbed above $2,100, technical buyers showed interest and helped the pair push higher. Furthermore, Rafi envisions a scenario of inflation prompting a run on the Federal Reserve with people exchanging dollars for gold. Gold's new high signals global central banks are likely accumulating the precious metal to diversify away from the dollar as persistently large fiscal deficits threaten to erode its real value further and lead to more inflation. Alternatively, if authorities avoid printing money, debt defaults may contract the money supply, possibly returning gold's value to $35 per ounce, similar to 1971. Throughout the discussion, Rafi articulates his belief that the eventual outcome hinges on the drastic impact on the purchasing power of gold in dollar terms, regardless of the specific scenario. Now we present the clips of Rafi Farber's insights from his recent interview with Liberty and Finance. Before we continue to delve into this discussion, please subscribe to our channel and activate the bell icon for timely updates. I'm surprised because the Fed hasn't done anything yet and the money supply is still more or less shrinking. I mean, bank credit has been growing lately and I'm not even sure why exactly that's happening. Uh, my guess is that uh, that high interest rate debt is increasing because people are maxing out their credit cards. You can see that on credit cards. So since money and debt are both our opposite sides of the same fiat coin, uh, the more debt that people go into, the more money supply there is because of the fractional reserve bank system, as we all know. So um, uh, that's if that's why the money supply is growing, uh, it's not the Fed doing it. And really, why should gold be hitting new highs now before they start printing again? So I think that's a pretty good sign that when they do, uh, things could get really intense, like uh, gold moving hundreds of dollars a day. Um, and it's not just going to go straight up. There's going to be days where it gets scary down because there's going to be dollar crunches here and there where, you know, banks need their dollars. So they... Uh, shut down things or call in loans and you start to see deflationary forces and then inflationary forces the next day. I mean, it's going to get pretty crazy and you have to understand conceptually, not every day what's happening, but basically what is going to happen as things start to fly out of control and you got to be prepared for both directions. So I'm excited. I'm also a little bit antsy and nervous, but I try to acknowledge my emotions without being too affected by them because I know what the end game is and that's what I'm comfortable with. Yeah, well, there's two things they could do. They could um, inflate more or they could just let everything collapse. There's a, it, it, It's a binary path. There's nothing else to do. Um, and if they, if they, either way, and this is something that, that a lot of gold people 
gold and silver stackers don't quite understand. And it's ha- it's hard to really internalize it because it's it's very scary. And you think that one path is failure and the other path is success, but they all lead to the same thing. And that is, well, if the Fed decides to inflate more, uh, then, then, you know, a run on the central bank is the equivalent of, P- of, you know, New York community bank court depositors taking dollars out of their bank, but a run on the fed is taking our money out of dollars, right? That it's, that's a saying that it's hard to register because like dollars are money, but no, no, they're not. They're a derivative of money. So a run on the central bank would be people taking their gold out of dollars by getting rid of dollars and buying gold, right? At someplace like Miles Franklin, as you know. Um, and, uh, when everybody does it at the same time, nobody sells any. And then uh, <laughs> the uh, the the merchants are stuck with it. So that that's that's the end game. Well, not stuck with it because we can trade it for other things. But um, yeah, so they can either print more and then people run after gold or they can print nothing and then all the debt defaults. And then what happens then is that the money supply shrinks so drastically as the defaults go in a domino effect, chain by chain by chain, all the way back to 1971 when gold was $35 an ounce. We end up with gold at $35 an ounce, except its purchasing power in dollar terms goes through the roof in the same way. So, you know, either way, let's say in a in a in a, in a hyperinflationary scenario, a house is s- sells for 10 ounces, whatever, five ounces of gold, whatever the number is going to be. Uh, and then in a hyper deflationary scenario, it's the same thing. A house sells for 10 ounces of gold for $350 instead of 30, you know, $3.5 million. It's just a question of how many zeros, but it's all the same thing. Rafi Farber emphasizes an interesting observation about the discrepancy between all time highs in gold and the physical markets. He suggests that retail investors, represented by ETFs such as GLD, are not actively participating in the current gold surge. Analysts at U.S. Global Investors looked at a basket of 85 gold mining stocks. They found that financial conditions worsened for the industry in 2023, despite gold having a relatively good year, jumping more than 13%. Offering a distinctive perspective, he mentions the risk of a recession with a shrinking money supply and advocates for acquiring gold to safeguard against economic uncertainties. Let's get back to the interview. It's not about dollar profits, right? It's not about... Um, earning dollars with gold. It's about having gold, uh, having money, having gold and silver. It doesn't have to be gold. It can be silver. It depends what you can afford. It depends what you want. Um, but you need some money. And it's not it's not a thing that you want to like take a position in and then try to sell it for a dollar profit and then calculate how many sh- much stuff you can get with that do- with those dollars. It's about you get a paycheck, right? And you're paid in fake money. So take some of that paycheck and get some silver. Do it every month. And stop. Don't even look at the price. It's not, it doesn't matter. Um, and I will say this that I've noticed that I also wrote this on the Endgame Investor, that the all-time highs in gold, they're not being reflected in the physical markets. I don't think um, from the premiums that I'm seeing, they've, they're falling. And they're not being reflected in the ETFs, meaning the retail investors are not really part of this, it seems, because if they were buying GLD, GLD would be, there would be inflows of gold into GLD, but they're still flowing out. So what this seems to me to be is a banker war between banks and maybe family offices. It's it's focusing on the futures market. And those are, that's where the big money is. They don't mess with ETFs. They're not retail investors. Some big money does, but most of it is in the futures market because all the leverage is there. Um, and I saw this, we saw this leading up to March, 2020 for about a year, open interest was just heading higher and higher and higher and higher. We're coming off a low in open interest in gold. Open interest is the amount of contracts that are open. We, we got up something like 800,000 on the eve of the lockdowns. Um, and open interest is up something like six sixty thousand contracts. I think it's like 15% of the total open interest from three days ago, um, over the last three days. So there's some kind of bank battle going on here and the stackers are not really involved they're on the periphery right now um when they get involved price will go much higher um they're not involved right now so i don't see this um i don't see this rally stalling uh, anytime soon if the money supply is going down there will be a recession because gdp is how much money is circulating and if it goes down it means people are poorer or feel poorer um 
So, I mean, what I'm thinking is that the last the last factor that is keeping the money supply steady to growing is first of all um what i said before is the the high interest rate debt and credit cards that that gen zers are doom spending and just buying whatever they can because they've given up on saving and raising a family and living a normal human life um this this is one of the stages of hyperinflation right you just you stop trying to you stop you just get off the treadmill and you're like forget it. I'm just going to buy whatever and get rid of my dollars, which is the same thing as stacking really, except with lesser quality uh, goods and services, right? If you're going to, if you're going to buy a pack, if you're going to like buy a pack of gum versus, you know, a brick of gold, a brick of gold is uh or a coin of gold, sorry, is, uh, is more liquid than a pack of gum, but it's, they're still both a flight to real goods, right? It's the same thing conceptually. Uh, so are we going to have a Keynesian style recession? If the money supply keeps shrinking? Yeah. If the reverse repos run out, and we hit something, yeah, if there's a financial crisis and then debt starts to default, that all shrinks the money supply even faster. And then people are in recession. Um, you know, uh, just to go back to Egypt for a second, are the people that had pounds and now they have a lot less, are they in recession? Yeah. What about the people in Egypt that have gold? They have a lot more purchasing power now than they did yesterday. They're fine. So uh, if you want to stay out of recession yourself, get some money. If you want to be part of the recession, be part of the fake money. Many experts anticipate a rise in gold prices this year, so buying gold now could lead to higher returns. Many gold experts recommend limiting your gold and precious metal allocation to 10% or less. Given these insights, how do you plan to incorporate gold into your investment strategy, and what factors will guide your decisions in the evolving economic scenario? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you find this video informative, don't forget to support our channel and turn on notifications to stay informed about our latest videos. See you in the next video.